What is happening, Metal for Metal Universe? Uh, we're here for episode 32 of some Metal for Metal news. A uh, really kick-ass episode that we got for you guys today, including uh, Venom's new track, 100 Miles to Hell. Uh, we lost uh, Warren Dane mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago, I believe. You know, uh, lead frontman for Nevermore and Sanctuary, who we were, uh, we were about to see Sanctuary yeah. open up for Iced Earth uh, coming up in March. But we also got you uh, a nice Kerry King interview talking about the Big Four and uh, much, much more. It's all here live and fast and hard on Metal for Metal. <laughs> 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 I'm PJ Steven, that's Dennis Parker, and... That's some fucking enthusiasm. I'm Adam Remix 3! We got a nice episode! I got a new record, Dio Last in Line, been waiting for it to get it for a while. I saw a kick-ass movie over the weekend. It's a good... Well, excuse the fuck out of me for trying to be optimistic. Jesus Christ. You want me to do it again? Hold on. (laughs) Hey, guys. I'm PJ Steven from Metal for Metal. Thank God. This is Dennis Parker. Hangover, the hangover And we've Hell. got... Are you fucking touching me now? Oh, your dog. I ain't touching... I know, oh, I can God. touch you now, you understand? God. Jesus. Uh, we, got, we got a killer episode for you guys uh, today. Love this uh, news that we have. Um, got some great Venom news. A great interview from Kerry King. Also, we got Rob Halford talking about not getting into the Hall of Fame. I mean, cannot wait. Such yeah. bullshit. He bullshit. Didn't. Jesus. You just hurt my dog. I did. No, Rosie's dramatic. But I guys got a great episode for you guys today. I want to uh, start with a, a little story that Dennis Parker has for us today with a scammer that called him oh, yeah. and asked if we were metal. Well, I, I don't know how how these motherfuckers got my phone number, but at least like twice a day. How do I they get all call. get our phone number? Yeah, numbers. but at least twice a day I get a call from somebody trying to sell me something or trying to say that I owe them something. So this was some guy calling from, I don't know, Uzbekistan or something, just saying like any new... That I guess maybe you could tell from Google or something that we have like a metal, heavy metal business, and he thought it was like, but like metal. Like he thought it was like metal. heavy metal, like steel, you yeah. know, like and then selling that, and then I, and he was just like, so you sell, you sell the metal, right? And I was like, yeah, oh yeah, man, we got all kinds of fucking metal for you. We got Black Sabbath metal, we got Iron Maid metal, we got every kind of fucking metal. And I thought that he was just gonna hang up on me after that, and he didn't. Like, he just kept, he's like, okay, okay, that's good. He just kind of laughed at me. Oh, I like the metal. And just, and just kept on trying to get me to, like, fucking sign up for something. So finally, after, like, 12 minutes of talking to this guy, just fucking around with him, I finally just called him, like, a, a con artist piece of shit and hung up on him. Yeah. But, like, you imagine, what if he was just, like, a, some kind of, like, kind of, he, like, worked for, like, EMS guitars or something? Which is he like, might have been. I might have just blew, like, a giant <laughs> promotional thing we could have had, like, with the ESP. Yeah. Or, the, or, yeah, with the yeah. ESP, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I guess we'll never know. We'll never. We'll the never world might never know. If I just, uh, if I just fuck this up. But he all. just like crossed out that. Like, yeah, oh, no more like, metal. Oh, no metal for him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Fuck. Well, guys, uh, let's get into our uh, news that we have. I'm really excited to uh, get you guys' take on uh, a lot of the news that we have. Uh, what do we got, Dennis? Okay, well, we got a new song from Venom, 100 Miles to Hell. Um, Always love Venom. Why well, they were playing this uh, live in the Netherlands, and it's a fan uh, recorded. You know, video of the show. Yeah, we watched yeah, it. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. They so played. They, they played Bloodlust and they play. Uh, well, they played this Death one, of uh, Rock and Roll. Right, and uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. It's going to be like a three EP track that's coming out just in a couple days, December twenty second. And from my reading here, this is some of the um, original music they've had uh, since two from since two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Well, and you know, we tried to find their album Black Mass uh, from 2017, from this past year. Right. But we couldn't find it, anything about it on the internet, yeah, only show, on like Spotify and yeah. Napster and shit. It shows up on Google. You know, like we know it's a thing, but like whenever you try to look it up on Wikipedia, it's not even there. Yeah, I don't know. Wikipedia, yeah. get your shit together. Yeah, it's just showing. Um, it's showing from the very depths back in 2015, being which is a great one. record. By yeah, the way. it was awesome. I was listening <clears> to that this morning. Well, maybe Venom has just escaped everybody's mind because when we did our year in review, we didn't even mention the new Venom album. That's think. true. We yeah. didn't. It was a good album, though. I liked it. Yeah, liked even it. the internet forgot about it. Yeah. So it's not just our fault. Yeah, it can't be right. just our fault. All right. So moving on to uh, Pete, the Kerry King interview, you were talking about. Uh, he was just. Quoted as saying he doesn't believe there will be any more Big Four shows in the future, which is very interesting because like when I read the title of this, I kind of figured that he was going to be like, because the the guy it actually was Chris Jericho who was interviewing him for this, and they asked him, you know, what do you think? Uh, do you think there's going to be possibly any more Big Four shows coming up? And he's like, no, I don't, I don't really think that's going to happen. But then he just went on to say nothing but nice things about the entire. So he never show. said like why. No, he never said why. 
there isn't going to be another Big Four. Um, he was just like, it was great, but we'll never do it right. again. He, he talked about like he and Lars got to hang out after the show because Lars is the guy who likes to go out and party at the end of the you know the end of the shows. Yeah. And James Hetfield was there, and um, he's known Robert forever, you know. So they hung out, and Kirk was always there backstage. Well, he, he, knew, he knew Dave for a long time right. too. Him so, and Dave used to hang out. Yeah. So the only thing um, Dave played in one of or uh, Carrie King played in one of Dave's bands for a little while. He was in Carrie King was in Megadeth uh, for like a minute. Before, right, yeah. before they released their first album. That's right, you know? yeah. He was in there for a second, and he was like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't believe him. But, um, but yeah, all we have is that Tom he heard He heard, like, we're going to do a cover of These Boots, and he was like, oh, no. Yeah, he's like, no, we're not doing that, especially since all of it's bleeped out now, so that was probably a good a good call. Yeah. But Tom Araya was quoted as saying before that um, the reason that they wouldn't be doing any more Big Four shows because of the politics and character of one of someone in a particular band, which, I mean, we can only assume talking about Dave Mustaine. Sure. You know? Uh, so who knows? But uh, they asked Kirk. So he about so this. he said so he said because of one member, like because of so that's what Tom Arias said. Tom Arias said yeah, because Tom of Arias the politics said, yeah, and one member of the band. the politics, the politics of character in one particular band. It's got to be. Made and I quote: it. So he's got to be talking about Dave Mustaine. And um, but in the the memoir you're reading, the Dave Mustaine's memoir. Yeah. He actually talked. He 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 got on this for a second, saying that. Um, he wasn't upset about the lineup of the show because a lot of people kind of hypothesized that maybe Megadeth was upset because Slayer got to play after them and, and Megadeth got, had to play before them. Dave's like, no, I didn't care about that. He was just saying, maybe if we do this again, we could switch it around like then we could take turns. Maybe Slayer could play first, then we could play after them. So, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Well, I also read that when the lineup was being talked about, Dave Mustaine was like, no, I'm not playing right before Metallica. Really? So, yeah. So, because he's like, no, I'm not not opening for Metallica. You know? Like, he's not playing right before them. So, I always heard... And plus, I mean, you know, um, if you wanted to switch it up a little bit, I I don't see... Metallica opening up for anybody, to be honest, and I will admit that I couldn't see Metallica opening up for anybody. Like, I couldn't see Metallica playing before any of those bands. Yeah, no, it's just not gonna happen. Nah, no. But I mean, I guess technically he still did open for Metallica. Technically he did. Oh sure, but just because he didn't go on right before Metallica, I you mean, still opened up for Metallica. Well, I think to me, um, I just remember like Joey Bellinana from Anthrax being like, "Can we open?" Like. Can we go first? Right. Uh, they were uh, like, we want to go first. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just always assumed it just had to do with uh, kind of just Slayer preferred to play at night. Just kind of their music is so dark that it's really cool. You know, it does. I, I don't know. Like to me, just they were still was, playing in the daytime. though. Yeah. It just seems like just thinking of Slayer playing like at one o'clock in the afternoon. Just I don't know. Something doesn't seem right. I, about I that. think it was also because they they, start, they, they let start playing s- around like dusk like right yeah. when it started to get dark that's when Slayer well I thought they also did it because Slayer had just dropped Roll Painted Blood and Metallica was in the middle of the Death Magnetic tour mm-hmm. so maybe because they were doing tour like album tours that they were going on last that's always what I thought too yeah. because Endgame came out way before the Big Four tour and Anthrax were not in the middle of an album tour as well so I think it had something to do with that as well. Yeah, very well could have been. So, who knows? Uh, moving on to the next uh, piece of news. Rob Halford speaks out about him not getting nominated for the Rock and Roll Okay, Hall of Fame. Let, let me say something real quick. Um, the guy, the people that are getting into the Hall of Fame, um, you know... I love that solo. Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you kink out. Yeah, having a, having a kid will do that. It does. <laughs> So, the people that are already getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, I will say... Oh, yeah, I'm not even sure who's... who's well, like, it's, it's... Well, it's Bon Jovi. I know he's one of them. Yes. Bon okay, so, here, so... Yeah, he Bon Jovi, he's the main guy, like, this year. Uh, dire Straits is getting in, which I love Dire Straits, and I think that they are very much over overdue to be in... Uh, you know who Dire Straits is. Yeah. Dire Straits, yeah. And then the cars. The cars, I think, were very revolutionized for that time area or that area. So I, I respect that they're fat. They're, they're getting in. The Moody Blues are going in. I don't care about them, but they deserve to go in. I'm just, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, Nina Simone. I don't even know who that is. Who that is. I, I have no opinion on that. And then Sister Rosetta Sharp. Tharp. I don't know who that is either. So whatever. But the fact that Bon Jovi. I will say Bon Jovi needs to go into the Hall of Fame 
Not right now, though. Not before Judas Priest. Priests, yeah. priests were doing things in 74 that no band will ever do, ever. Um, they still have the best speed metal album of all time, Painkiller 1990. Um... There's stuff in the early 80s, late 70s. I mean, uh, it was incredible. Judas Priest is is one of the big five of heavy metal bands, if you ask me. See, and I think what's crazy is that this is only the first time they've been nominated for it. Yep. Whenever, Even though they've been eligible since 1999, I think yep. it yep. said. So, and if you go on here, uh, I'll put the link down below. You can uh, see the interview that Rob Halford had. He was on a radio station. It's like 100.7 in phoenix arizona he actually had the email on his phone that he got that morning that saying sent, like hey you yeah, didn't, saying like you know sorry you didn't do it but they mentioned in the email that you know black sabbath had been nominated like eight times or something before they finally got you know inducted into it but um this is just the first time that that judas priest is even and mentioned i think that's, to go in there so that means ridiculous. what they have like eight more years before they may get it in there? I think that's just I, I think it's ridiculous. I don't, bon Jovi hasn't done anything for music yet. Yeah, he might later on, and somehow somehow someone might think that he will later on in the years. But no, like he's they're nothing special. Bon Jovi is nothing special. Um, they were in the '80s, but now they're not. Judas Priest is still special. Judas Priest is still putting out records. Judas Priest is still making new heavy metal. Still making new music. Mm-hmm. Why isn't that the definition of of great you know you've been making music since 74 you're still putting out records whether it's good or bad you're still making new music yeah you know what's the last record that Bon Jovi did you know yeah, it's, it's one of the, it's one of those things where it's like you should be awarded for your longevity and I think that's a problem with, with a lot of things in society but you're not awarded for that for longevity and that is to me anytime someone says hey who's better this person or that person <coughs> first thing that comes to my mind is well, how's their longevity? Are they still doing it? What's going on? What are they... What's the newest thing that they've right, done? They've been just completely static for the yeah. last 10 years, not doing anything, you know? Or but if those 15 seconds of firepower is anything mm-hmm. like the new record that Priest is dropping, I think we're going to get a hell of a record, and I can't wait. So, Priest, just wait your turn. Or don't give a yeah, shit, don't give because a shit. I don't give a shit, yeah, to be honest. Black Sabbath didn't give a shit. They were just like, well, if we get in there, we get in there. If not, who yeah. cares? You know? Look at all the greats that are not in the Hall of Fame. You know, I was mentioning this Iron earlier. Iron, still not in Iron there. Maiden, Meatloaf, uh, fucking Motorhead. Uh, it's insane. It's And look at like a lot of these punks that... I say punk is in music. Punks that need to go into the Hall of Fame that are not, you know? Yeah, that's why I just never gave a fuck about the Rock and Hall of Fame man. at all. Like, I do not take them seriously. I get that, you know, if a band does get nominated to go in there, sure, show up, you know? I mean, great, you know? how? Look, look how long it took for guys not, like Rush to get in, you know? Right. Deep Purple. Like, yeah. what the fuck? But, just, and, and then guys like, got people like N.W.A., and like Aretha Franklin and shit like that went in. Fuck that. Right. Rob Halford did say that you know he thought that you know in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame they there should be more heavy metal bands on the shelf yeah. as opposed to just rock and roll bands. And I get that. I mean that's that's a good point to make. But at the same time, that's just the, the lack of heavy metal bands in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is why I just don't take them seriously. And I think that they only put in bands and they only put in members like N.W.A. and Aretha Franklin and and. Uh, uh, acts like that, you know, R and B, hip hop, rapish kind of th- kind of thing, is just to try and create quantity and not quality. Yeah, that's what I have to say about that. All right, next piece of news: Rise of LA Thrash Metal is coming out uh, next year, early January, right? Uh, yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah, so... Um, Apparently there's some... Re- this is going to be like a really big one because Inside Metal does yeah, there, a lot like of great two, DVDs. Yeah, there's like two or three other ones that um, that are out right now. And they're they're having like a screening in... Uh, I think maybe in LA. They're, they're having a screening, of course, in, in North Hollywood, California. There you go. They'll, they'll be releasing it in a theater but I mean we're never going to go to see that so we'll just wait for the DVD to drop on Amazon next year but David Elson will be narrating it and it was produced by Joe, Joe Floyd um, executive producer Warren Croyle uh-huh. and um, it's it's going to be like 10 bucks but it's going to be uh, featuring a lot of people that we know here we got uh, people from Forbidden Slayer, Megadeth, Testament, Overkill, Anthrax, Armored Saint, Raven, Agent Steel, Body Count, 
Defcon, Alice in Chains, Prong, Accept, and uh, and even more. So holy it's, shit! Right. So it's gonna be pretty cool. And it's like an hour and a half long, so that gives us something to, to do next year. To do. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait for that. That's gonna be hell yeah. That's yeah. gonna be fucking cool. Yeah, I watched uh, I watched one on on Netflix that, or it wasn't Netflix, I just I just looked it up online. It was it was one that came out a couple years ago that was pretty cool where they interviewed there's a bunch of rare footage from from Lars and from Testament everyone and it just went through them. I can't remember what it was called, but it, it, it uh, just kinda went over the, the early LA and just San Francisco thrash scene in yeah. general and it was pretty interesting it was really- I was mentioning like there are a lot of killer as he just named a lot of killer thrash and metal bands that came out of LA and uh, that whole California scene uh, you know Slayers from Huntington Beach you know uh, I mean uh, but you know it's always weird you know the big four you know they're all in LA they're all in that California area except for Anthrax who's from Rochester but that's just so weird how Anthrax was still yeah. in that in that um, in that block. The one I was talking about was Get Thrash, the, the story of thrash metal. That that's, oh, the, okay. that, that's yeah, yeah. the one I was watching the other day. But um, yeah, it didn't really show anything. I, I didn't know, but it was just kind of cool just yeah. watching the the old interviews, all, old uh, archival footage. So that's something to to keep a lookout for. And uh, the biggest piece of news today is that World Dane. Has passed away. Royal Dane, yeah. Yeah, yeah he passed away uh, December 13th in Brazil. He was recording his new solo album and he died of a heart attack. So, of course, um, he's been famous for Sanctuary and Nevermore. And, of course, Sanctuary, we were, were gonna, just about to see. Yeah, and, you were um, going to go see Sanctuary. Yeah, they open, opened, they're opening, opening for Iced Earth, Earth in March. Yep, and. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, no more. And they were even talking about, they did uh, an interview with, uh, with Warl, and he was saying that. That there was a possibility of a Nevermore reunion in yep. the next couple years, yep. you know, if they could get back um, with Jeff Loomis and, and all the others. But now that's just off the table now, though. So, so that's pretty shitty, man. Like I, I was listening to Refuge Denied and Into the Mirror Black when 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 I read about that because th- those are my two favorite Sanctuary albums, and then of course Dead Heart and a Dead World for Nevermore. That that's one of my favorites there. But that sucks, man. I, I mean, I really like him as a singer. Um, I know a lot of people didn't. I like him. Yeah. yeah, but he had like the perfect kind of power metal voice. Yeah. I love Nevermore. Yeah. They're killer. Yeah. I, I think in a way, I kind of maybe like sang- the early Sanctuary a little bit more than the later Nevermore. But yeah, it's it's just a shitty thing. And if you go on, um, I'll put the link down below for this. There's a video where he was on Brazilian TV uh, just playing... A song, you know, with two of his bandmates, and that is officially like the last performance that, that wow. he's been filmed doing. But yeah, uh, that's uh, that's pretty terrible. That's, that's yeah, I was shitty. really excited to see them too, man. I would have loved to have seen Sanctuary. Yeah, because I did get to see Nevermore open for Opeth a few years ago, and that was awesome. But it would have been great to see Sanctuary because I heard they put on like a. Hell, I wonder who they're gonna get to replace Sanctuary. I don't know. I don't know. Ice Earth hasn't said anything about it. I, I have read on Twitter on Ice Earth's Facebook page too. Where uh, Matt Barlow and John Schaefer, they both came out and said that they're going to miss the guy because they've known um, they've known Moral for a long time. Yeah. Since the very beginning, they would tour together. So man, that's just, that's just shitty. I just heard he was a really nice guy. I mean, he got you know hooked up into that whole alcohol alcohol thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. They said, uh, what was the quote that maybe it's written here that Nevermore was the was the best band to ever be destroyed by alcohol or something like that. It was oh, yeah, by yeah, alcoholism. Yeah. It's just like totally a shitty thing. You know, oh wait, uh, the greatest band that alcohol ever ruined. Yeah, so that that's pretty shitty. Yeah. Wow. The, yeah. I, like, again, you know, repeating it, I, I would have loved to see Sanctuary. It sucks when that happens. He was so young too, you know, and, uh, of a heart attack. But you know. Yeah, they actually. That was another thing they were saying. Like on, uh, if you look on Wikipedia, it has him listed as like 46, but people are saying no, he's actually more like, or he's. I think it has him listed as 48, but people are saying really he's actually 56. Yeah. So who knows what's going on with that? Wikipedia obviously doesn't have their shit together. Yeah, they apparently. Since they don't even have Black Mass on. But there you know, people. Venom. Yeah. So there's a reason you can't use Wikipedia to write college papers. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Jump down. You wanna get down? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, that's our news. Yeah, that's that's our news this week, uh, of course. Yeah. And uh, we're going to jump on to our topic of the week, which is uh, going to collide with uh, you know, something we saw this weekend, which was uh, the new Star Wars movie, mm-hmm. which I was a huge fan of. And you were I just, thought, you were just I thought okay I was, fan. I was lukewarm about it, like a lot of people. Lukewarm? Yeah, I was going to get it. Spo- uh, hold on. 
Spoiler alert! Right, Stop spoiler. watching yeah, this right. video if yeah. you haven't seen Star Wars. If you Wars. haven't seen it, just do not do not proceed if you've actually okay. made it this far. Because anyway. because we're not really going to talk about the plot of the movie because this is a metal show. Right. But we might slip and you know say something. Yeah. But um, um, I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought it was good too. Yeah. I mean, I well, you well you really liked it, and and I left there thinking that. I was like, wow, I, I enjoyed this, but I just wasn't thrilled about it like I was The Force Awakens. Yeah. But there was a guy who sat behind me, and he just, like, after the credits, like, he was just like, what the fuck was that? He's like, that's the worst fucking Star Wars movie I've ever seen. I was like, no, no, it's, it's definitely not I don't as bad know. People, as episode one. People are so fun. Here's the thing. Here's my thing that I was thinking of. You know, people are not going to the movies to get entertained anymore. They're just going to so judge it. And yeah, bitch. they're just going to bitch and judge. Yeah, because I went there to have a good time. You know, like, yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, I loved it. I don't see the. I don't. Yeah. I do not see the the bullshit with this movie. I thought it was so fucking good. Yeah, I usually have my expectations pretty low when I go to see a movie, yeah. just so I'm not disappointed. That opening scene was one of the most intense scenes ever. Yeah, the, like, light, ever. the lightsaber scene with uh, was awesome. Kylo and Ray. Oh my this, god. <gasps> The surprises, you know, Snoke dying, Luke dying. I thought it was great, but we didn't see it coming. Like, why? And, like, you know, I still have so many questions. That movie was shit. Why is having more questions, like, judging the fact that the movie is bad? Like, why? Right. You know, just because you have more questions doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know? But anyway, we're going to jump onto our topic and something we were just kind of having, going to have some fun with and think about. Uh, I changed it up a little. Okay. What, uh... Let's see. Lo, lo, who who from heavy metal would you put on the Jedi Council? Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. So like, we'll say twelve members and one member from each band. Twelve members, right? Yeah, and we Jesus do one, Christ. one member from from each band. One so we member. can't do like Tony Iommi and Ozzy. It's got to be like one or the other. All right. Or any band for that matter. Well, I'm gonna can, I'm yeah. gonna kick it. We'll do one. We'll do one at a time. Okay. And I'll kick it off and I'll say uh, Steve Harris from Maiden. Steve Harris from Maiden. Yeah, right, he's well, on I'm the gonna, Jedi Council. All right, so I'm gonna say Ronnie James Dio, definitely. Yeah. I mean, because he was like the old wise, the yeah. wise one everybody looked up to. Yeah. So, so we got, okay, so we got Bruce and we got Dio. No, we got Steve Harris. Oh, we got, okay, we got Steve <laughs> Harris. My bad. Okay. okay, next I'll put. So I'm gonna get this. Okay, Steve Harris. Uh, okay, the next guy yeah. I'll say is uh, Tom Mariah. Tom Mariah. All right. Why, why would you do Tom Mariah? I think he's just the wisest the of Slayer. Wise guys in yeah, the band. The, one of the, yeah, he's the wisest of Slayer. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be a hard one. So why does there have to be twelve? Is there is there was there always twelve people? On Not the always, but that's just that's there, just the number that you yeah. came up in your head. Um, I'm gonna say Lemmy. I I think for me it's gonna be very generic, but yeah, I'm gonna say definitely say Lemmy from Motorhead just because he would be the one who would actually when the going got tough, like he'd be able to kill. The Sith Lord, or something. That's true, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he would back down. He said he, he'd be the one, like, just sitting in his chair with his whiskey, just like, all right, that's what we should do. You know? All right, so so far we have Steve Harris, Dio, Tom Mariah, Lemmy. Mm -hmm. So my turn? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi? Yeah. All right, yeah. That's the, and it can only be one person from each band, right? Yeah. All right, because I'm getting the, because I know I'm going to Tony Iommi. All right. Um, let's see here. I will go with Brian with Brian Johnson. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll go yeah. with him. Mm -hmm. Brian Johnson. Okay, uh, I'll say. Uh, um, I'll say. Uh, I'll say Eric Peterson from Tender Testament. Eric Peterson. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got like four more to go. Yeah, you All got right. it. Um. Let's see here. Who should be in there next? Um, you know, I'm going to go with Cliff Burton from Metallica. Yeah. Because I don't want to put Lars in there because I feel like Lars should maybe just be like the Jar Jar Binks. No, Lars the, would be the Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, of the camp. No, 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 no. Jar Jar. No, 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 no. Lars would be w Waldo. The w Waldo. Waldo. The, the guy that owned Anakin that oh, wanted yes, the money only money works on me your Jedi yeah, mind tricks like, don't work on me only money you some kind of Jedi <laughs> tricks don't work on me yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> only oh, money shit. works on me yeah alright yeah James would be Jar Jar okay so we have Cliff Burton next right you said Eric Peterson right? yeah and then right. Cliff Burton and then uh, I'll have to go with um oh man yeah um, it's getting kind of hard in there. Yeah, 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 most definitely. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go with. Um, I put Robert Plant in there from Led Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah, it's not metal, but I mean rock and roll. I definitely put uh, Robert Plant in there. He's okay. smart. He's smart as fuck. All right, and the next. 
I'm just keeping track of this because I don't want to don't want to go over and make sure I got there. Um, how about we go with Glenn Danzig? Oh yeah. You want to put him in there? Cause I, I mean, feel like he could he could like maybe summon the dark side. You know, if needed, yeah, if needed, if yeah, needed, call. could be that one, kind of like that chick from uh from Doctor Strange. You know, who was like who also was summoning the powers from the dark. Oh Force, right, the the, the over or the, the, the grand, ancient one, the ancient one, right, yeah, the ancient one. It turns out, I guess, spoiler alert, at the end of it, she was actually using yeah, she actually using the dark powers. Mallet magic. Yeah, yeah, so I feel like he could maybe do something like that. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, next is me, right? Yeah. All right, um. I'd probably say, let's see, man. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, Vinny Apice. For, no, you already said Dio. Fuck. Yeah, I said Dio. Ah, uh, shit. I like, yeah, he's smart. Um, okay. Uh, King Diamond. King Diamond, that's a good one. I put King Diamond. Yeah. In case Danzig goes down. Yeah. And we need more black magic. Yeah. He does kind of have that... Like the cool makeup get I'm going on, kind of like like Darth Maul, but you know, like he's a Jedi. Yeah. So that would be cool. Yeah. Okay, and for the next one, um, oh, I guess I'm gonna just go with Scott Ian, cause like he has like the beard. Oh, so like, like the wise like, the beard. Wise, kind of like the I, I don't want to say like Gandalf the the wise, but he just kind of has that the wise. I don't know. He just kind of looks like he'd be a Jedi. You know? Okay, now I'm, I'm gonna. I think we're I think we're at twelve now. Yeah, is that the yeah. last one? Yeah, we're at twelve. Danzig, and then uh, well, I got Scott Ian. Yeah. And then what? Who did you say before? Uh, you said King Diamond. King Diamond, yeah. Yeah, we're at twelve now. So if we were to put an honorable mention, who would you put in between Barlow or Schaefer? I think I think Schaefer would probably just try to be the end. I think he would probably try to overthrow the Jedi Council if he didn't get. His I, way. I can I can overthrow him. Yeah, it's just like yeah, you know. You're breaking my heart, yeah, John yeah. Schaefer. You know, he'd be like, "This is an outrage." You know, like I'm I'm on the council, but I'm but I'm not a master. master. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, you know. And he would just be really pissed off about it. So I would go yeah. with Barlow. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like John Schaefer would just end up starting way too much shit being on the council. Like he just would not play well with others. Another honorable he would mention. He just end up trying to fire. Everybody on yeah, the you're, like that. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> you're just like, now, now <laughs> out of all that, now here's the real kicker. Out of all those twelve, I kind of know the answer, but out of all those twelve, who is Yoda? Who's Yoda? Yeah. Oh man, I, mean, it would ha- I guess it would have to be um, have to be Dio. Right? right? I was just thinking that. Yeah, because he's he's probably the shortest. He's the one shortest one. He's the, the wisest. He's probably, and he's probably the nicest yeah, guy. The nicest guy. The oldest on there. If you evil or divine, but the how, last in line. How cool was it getting to see Yoda in there? Then they did, and they used the in the new Star Wars. Oh, when he was like, you know, yeah. all Master Luke, always looking towards yeah, the horizon. Yeah, when Luke's like gonna blow up that tree, and then he's like, nah, maybe I don't want to. And then and he's like, nah, do it, nah, do it, and just like, do blows it. it up. I wish like Yoda. We should like uh, crop like uh, a metal a metal hand in there, and instead yeah. of like like that, when he makes the tree, we should have it go like that. That would, be, that would be cool. That'd that would be, be fucking cool. cool. That would be well, cool. guys, we appreciate you joining us for uh, this episode of Metal for Metal. Don't forget to check out our merch. I got some new shirts in. Uh, just ten dollars a piece. We'd love to have your business. Um, I hope you guys have a great, great, great Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Kwanzaa, whatever you guys whatever like to celebrate. Do. But we appreciate you guys. We hope to see you guys next year. Uh, we we plan on doing more, more, more content. Uh, we appreciate your support all through this year, but your uh, viewership and your fucking support for next year. We cannot wait. Um, again, a lot of killer content coming mm-hmm. your way. And again, thank you guys so much. So have Merry Christmas and uh, have a great night, guys.